Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time we're taking a step back a peg with the most recent ban list that has gone into effect, the March 31st, 2017 ban list that will be going into effect next week. Zodiac has been hampered a little bit, although it still has good combo potential for it, but the essence of the format is still like shifting away from Zoo, at least it seems, in terms of People think Paleo is just better than it, hands down, all that sort of nonsense. So that led me to wanting to test ABC, because ABC was that deck that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Paleozoic back last year, in last November and December. Uh, because ABC just has stronger points than Zoo does in terms of dealing with a grindy back row deck. Um, whereas Zoo can kind of really just fold to traps like all the time, but ABC can actually sort of play through traps depending on the situation. And also, ABC Dragon Buster is just a really strong boss monster as compared to Zodiac Dryden't in the matchup. Like, ABC Dragon Busters does so much more than Dryden't does in the matchup. So I decided I wanted to test uh, ABC, and I wanted to test it against Paleozoic to see uh, just if it still can hold its merit and hold its candle and hold its like hold itself up against the matchup or if I'm just actually just wrong and so I've been doing testing for that and that is what this video is going to contain so I'm not gonna waste too much more time uh, talking about this I just this list is just a generic list that I've put together I'm only playing two seeds because I don't want to brick with it uh, but three may just 100% be correct uh, but I'm playing brilliant fusion plus thrashers plus gadgets I'm just trying to open starter cards open starter cards is the way that this deck wins and that's what I'm trying to essentially do. Uh, so that's basically all there is to say about that. So let's not waste any more time and let's just jump straight into the first game, shall we? And let's see how this thing does. So going into the first game, my opponent gets to start, if I remember correctly. And ultimately, we're playing Paleo versus ABC. So this should be a pretty predictable matchup for like how it should play out. If you open well with Paleo, uh, then you're basically going to be giving the ABC deck a run for its money because of the fact that you have multiple cards in the form of Lost Wind, Dynamiscus, Olenoids, Canadia, all of those cards that just either disrupt your ability to put multiple monsters on the board, disrupt your ability to resolve Union Hanger, or disrupt your ability to summon your monsters and equip with Union Hanger. So ultimately it just it just kinda kinda just sets up for uh, for some interesting interactions with uh, with how things go. But as you can see, I tried to force through plays on my previous turn, uh, but ultimately ended, ended like in a dweller. Uh, just because Dweller seemed like the strongest option I had available to me after everything got uh, disrupted with my Union Hanger being Dynamiscus and all that sort of stuff. So ultimately not a lot that I was able to do about that. But I just keep flipping dimensional barriers uh, to prevent him from uh, overlaying into things. But then I decided to let him go into his Toad here and then strike it when he uh, goes into his next stand my face. Because he's going to be able to add back Swap Frog and make another Toad. But I do believe I still have another dimensional barrier face down, which means I can basically try and grind through this with the fact that I haven't been able to resolve any ABC plays this entire game. But I am potentially able to, like, ride this out because of the fact that I could, you know, have differing, uh, differing ways to just keep punching with my Abyss Dweller and keeping him from, uh, from being able to establish. But he has Soul Charge, which he plays in his deck to bring back his frogs. I mean, it's a nice little tech, so, I mean, it, it ended up getting him there because of the fact that I couldn't do anything but attack over, but like attack the dupe frog. Uh, but he also had Wabaku in his hand, so like the Wabaku would have also prevented me from killing the Toad. So I guess it was just at this point the game was just lost regardless of uh, what whether or not I did anything or whether or not what I made was correct or not as far as decision uh, decisions. But as it stands now, he's got a Toad on the board. He's negated my Twin Twister and taken it. I used Brilliant Fusion just to summon Seraph Knight so I could try and stay alive and like I can potentially draw my uh, my C in deck or my B. Whichever one I dumped with uh, Brilliant Fusion, I could draw the other one and potentially make ABC Dragon Buster and try to win. But ultimately, he just reveals that he has more frogs that he drew uh, for turn in the form of a Dupe Frog, and then he's just able to uh, keep going. Or it was a Dupe Frog, it was like Dupe Frog or Ronin Toten or something, but I don't know. Regardless, he was able to put another monster on the board, which means that he was guaranteed killing me that turn, so I just surrender. But from here, going into the second game, I open with a nice play with, like, the Gadgets and the Union Hanger, both Gadgets. Uh, but then he has Max C, so punishes me, right? So I just use Gold Gadget to go straight into A, equip, make my ABC Dragon Buster, give him a few draws, and just kind of end from there. Ultimately, I had a really cool play because of the fact that I had the double Gadgets, meaning that I could have made a couple of Rank 4s and then ABC Dragon Buster, but the Max C means that that's not going to be how that works, but so... I'm able to tag out my ABC Dragon Buster and ultimately just try and uh, work my way through his cards because I've already given him a few extra cards off of uh, off of this uh, off of the Max C, 
but ultimately, like, because I'm able to advance my engine, uh, I'm able to just play through his stuff. So I'm able to make double diamond dire wolf. I'm able to use my Sukiyomi to draw cards, uh, and then um, and then use diamond dire to pop the Sukiyomi, preserving it on the board, um, and then making my ABC Dragon Buster, which gets warning. But then I still haven't even normal summoned for turn, so I'm able to get the last C out of my deck and make ABC Dragon Buster, put my uh, my A Assault Core on it, uh, so that it's unaffected by monster effects, so that he can't like a normal Acaris it. Um, and then from there, I'm just able to just use my uh, capabilities to just tag out and do things in order to advance the game side. That was arguable to just keep ABC Dragon Buster on the board there. It was arguable that that was the better play. Uh, but I just went for the uh, I went for the play line that advances game states rather than just sticks with what uh, what was there. Um, I also thought that I was going to be able to get my uh, my A Assault Core for some reason, but I think there's just no uh, Union monsters in my graveyard at the point when it went to grave. Either that or it missed timing for some reason, or... I don't think ABC monsters can miss timing, actually. I haven't, like, read their actual text in a long time since, like, November when I played at YCS Anaheim, but regardless. Hedinomiscus is my C, and this build only has two copies of C in it, as you should remember. Uh, so, that means both of my Cs are banished, which means I don't have access to ABC Dragon Buster for the rest of this game, but... I am capable of just, you know, using my rank 4 toolbox and my advantage that I have over him that I've clawed back into uh, into being able to proceed the game state, but so I get Dynamiscus on my Norden here, which also banishes my B. But from here, like it's it's fine. I'm leading in terms of like the momentum of the game, and he is like a toe. He could draw like a Swamp Frog and make it totally awesome, and then I would just lose. Uh, but he has to draw that. Like if he draws any like of the traps um, that he plays, it's not really going to be enough ultimately. And I'm just able to take the game from there because of the fact that I'm just able to continually try to force uh, damage onto him and force like my game state and my engine on him uh, and not allow him to play the game at his pace essentially trying to put basically trying to play the game on my own pace on my own terms uh, versus uh, versus allowing him to uh, play the game on his so carrying on uh, he gets to start he sets his four and passes I end up getting my Union Hanger Olenoids and my A Assault Core gets bottom list so he gets to bring back his uh his olenoids and then he normal summons swap frog and uses its effect i just shotgun the barrier here because he has no traps in grave that he could summon one and two i don't want him to um under normal circumstances i would wait for like the ronin to come out so he wasted a frog resource in grave and then i'd barrier but he already has two on board that he could go into totally awesome with so i decide to barrier there so he doesn't just go straight into a rank two whether it be opabinia or totally awesome regardless but so from here, I'm just able to try and continue my play string. Uh, he warnings uh, some key monster there, and I just follow it up with an execution for Norden into a Rhapsody in Berserk. And I use Rhapsody here to banish his Ronin Toten and banish his Swap Frog. Um, and so from there, I'm able to not have my Rhapsody killed, one, because it's got 1,200 defense against his Olenoids' 1,200 attack. And then from here, it's just, uh, it's just, that's a good thing for me to have done because it gets his frog resources out of the grave now he could also still just top deck like a swap frog and it would be good but like he has to draw that he has to draw two one of two swap frogs left in his deck um otherwise he's just going to be drawing into traps that are not really going to be advancing him that far because of the fact that he doesn't have any more paleozoic traps in grave uh but so i'm just able to keep my play string moving i'm able to just do things and eventually just stick an abc dragon buster even though my union hanger gets olenoid again uh like a bunch of different things just happen but basically, ABC, it's really strange how this format is shaping up. Because of the fact that ABC has been pushed out of the format by Zodiac Beasts, um, it's really strange. Like, Paleozoic has definitely gotten a huge, like, boost in representation because Paleozoic is naturally very good against Zodiac. Because Zodiac relies on just a bunch of little, like, one-card interactions that are very easily stopped by the Paleozoic cards. Whereas ABC, on the other hand, is a little bit better situated against Paleozoic as a deck, just because its cards are more standalone-ish in, in in their like purest design. Like Photon Thrasher can just be a one-card beater. Your A Assault cores and all your little ABC cards, they have attack points. You can start forcing down damage without trying to combo off necessarily. Like that's that's something that exists. So ABC, while worse against Zoo is better against Paleozoic, at least it seems, because of the fact that, like, Paleozoic just, you can get into a grind game with your little one-card, you know, beater resources, and then eventually just gain your resources into your big pushes involving your ABC Dragon Buster and your Diamond Dyers and stuff like that, so, overall, like, it's, it's a really strange thing, I actually think that 
if the zoo deck is hindered enough, we might actually see some resurgence in ABC in play. Uh, just because ABC seems to be, from all the games that I've tested against uh, Paleozoic, ABC seems to be a little bit better situated towards Paleozoic than Zodiac is. Now, Zoo is probably an auto win against ABC. Uh, ABC probably just loses handily to uh, Zoo because of the fact that Zoo can do the fusion substitute combos and can then go and uh, dig for dimensional barriers, solemn strikes, all that sort of nonsense. They can dig for those cards that are literally going to tear ABC to shreds while you try to deal with their board. Zoo is a very proactive deck in that regard. Uh, but against Paleo, uh, ABC just kind of really shines because you have the accessibility into your cards um, that are all really good standalone pieces if you're able to just grind with the Paleo deck. Um, but Zoo can't really grind with the Paleo deck that well. It's literally like you have to open really well or else you're just not going to do much. So that's just something that I've, uh, that's something that I've been realizing over the past couple of days. That's just a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, like insight of what I've been seeing in my playtesting is that ABC is better against Paleo than Zoo is, but Zoo is just like a deck that tears ABC to shreds. Uh, so based off how like relevant Zoo is in this new format with Rap here being it too, will determine whether or not ABC can see like a degree of play because ABC is one of those decks that is strong in its own right, but it just loses to Zoo. It loses to the traps that Zoo turbos into, rather I should say. And the fact that Dryden just destroys Union Hanger doesn't really help that matter either, but anyway, as you can see, I'm actually just getting stomped in this game because my one card, like, uh, standalone beaters are not doing enough of a good job. Um, I thought I had a really strong hand, but then he just had, like, multiple of the correct trap for the specific moment to mean, uh, to make it to where I couldn't do anything. Like, he had Canadia for my, uh, for my, uh, A Assault Core, and that meant that I couldn't overlay with it, that meant that I couldn't Union Hanger attached to it, and overall it was just really poor for me as far as a, a situation to be in. It was very, very much a bad situation uh, because of uh, what it allowed him to do, because he was able to kill my A Assault Core uh, for free value because nothing was engraved. Even though I dimensional barriered him, like he was still able to beat over it. And then all I had was uh, Trick Clown, which I couldn't really do much with. I could make like, uh, I could have made like, uh, like Sukiyomi, but overall it wouldn't have really done much. And I just held it for the Twin Twister that you saw for Double Strike, but even then it still just wasn't enough to deal with his board of what he had established out there, uh, ready to be used. So, overall, I think that it's, like, the APC deck definitely has some potential play for the format. It definitely has a lot of good merits and good points about it. It just needs to figure out how to play against Zoo, and whether that's, like, ABC Kaiju, or whether or not that's, like, maining Denko Sekas, or doing whatever, I don't know. But I definitely feel like the ABC deck has potential simply because of the fact that ABC like I've been saying in this video, seems to have a much better time against Paleozoic than uh, Zodiac does. Because one, also, like, your your boss monster, ABC Dragon Buster, can out, like, two or three back row by itself because you can banish one of their back rows and then you get your four level fours um, off the three that come back and the one you get off Union Hanger, and then that means that you make double Diamond Dyer. And, like, that's that's that outs, like, two to three back row. Um, so, like, that's actually just, like, a really strong interaction against Paleo that Zoo does not have. But overall... The, the presence of Zoo and Zoo variants in the format are probably going to keep ABC locked and shut out. Uh, but overall, I just wanted to test ABC, and I've been testing ABC, and I felt like it was important to share with you guys the fact that like ABC just is just like it was back in November. ABC is still pretty strong against Paleo. There's a reason that ABC was able to actually compete against Paleo. Meanwhile, over here in Zoo format, the most recent Zoo format, Paleo is just destroying Zodiac Beasts. Uh, there's definitely things that you can learn and like correlate from that as far as results but anyway as always guys thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below be sure to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description of my facebook and patreon pages if you want to help support me directly then patreon is the best way to do so it also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month so definitely go check that out and check out the details over on patreon at the end of this month i'm giving away a couple of the duelist saga boxes uh to some people that are supporting me directly to just say thanks but if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel then be sure to check out second chance gaming's website which is also linked in the description they are a direct sponsor of me and this channel and i'm a big fan of how they do business with what i've seen so far their shipping and their pricing are both very good from what i've experienced personally but definitely check out their site and let them know that phoenix sent you but other than that that is it for this video again thanks for watching thanks for your time and as usual guys take care i'll see you in the next video let me know what your thoughts are on abc down below but to see you guys